Hello! This November, a new map jam came out from the ever-productive Quake community called Sewer Jam 2, and I thought I would just play and talk about one of them, uh, Pipework Powered Pillars by SZD. It's uh, the perfect marriage of platforming and combat with some really, really nicely thought out monster placement and combat arena ideas, the kind of thing that you'd see from uh, mappers like Fairweather. Marky, Smile Scythe, Mazzy, people like that. Uh, it also allows for some very aggressive play, and just on a general level, the construction, really lovely. Uh, beautiful lighting, uh, there's all these nice light wells, there's some lit water tricks, uh, the texturing looks fantastic, the surface of the water in particular. Uh, really lovely map. So, without further ado, let's play. Right, so coming out of the gate here, you have this little fight where you have the Axemen who come around and press you from multiple angles. There's a lot of things they can dodge around here. And you have the immediate sort of shotgun that you want to grab. Doing so, however, releases more Axemen directly behind you, which is dangerous. It makes it quite chaotic. They can really get behind you and they can uh, go for you. But it's a fun little fight to solve. You then have this uh, little section here, which is really good because the Ogre does a great job of pressuring you to deal with them, and at the same time you have the Axemen who drop down behind you and want to make you push forward. So you're having that situation where there's a tension between, if I stay on this platform, I've got a pin, I've got to look behind me, I've got to look in front of me. Who, who dies first, basically? It also introduces the uh, notion of those platforms that the Ogre was on, that lowers into the lava, or the, the slime. And if you hit the slime, you take, I think it's like 10 damage, and it respawns you somewhere. So you really don't want that. Heading back in here, we are back to the initial room, which is reconfigured. Our first secret as well, which is a much needed armor. The ogres, it's worth mentioning, are marksman ogres in this, so they have Z-axis awareness, and that makes rooms like this really dangerous if you leave them be, because they will just snipe you from any angle. It's kind of non-linear here, you have two choices of where you can go. This is the path that leads to the silver key, that leads to the silver door. There's a super nail gun here that you can see. And there's the uh, grenade launcher on the other side. Both are pretty cool. Uh, but obviously for the sake of speed you want to get the key first and not repeat any areas. This area here, which I forgot to mention, this introduces as well actually the player having to deal with these lowering platforms. Which is nice, it's, uh, it pushes you forward. Pushing you forward into an ogre who can snipe you. In this situation you want to get off these platforms because it's a boar who's bullying you. And there's this really expert use of the... Uh, the grunts and the axe grunts to uh, make that more difficult. As you can see though, you will, you'll get a big tail of uh, vor projectiles. These are the, the big boy vors in Alkaline who... Killing them doesn't make those projectiles any easier to get rid of. I got lucky here in Safar that a grunt walked into them. Usually I've got to try and jump over the head of the Floyd that you saw there and... Cancel the projectiles against him or just run. And if you, you run out and you get this far, you can usually get rid of them by this point. This introduces another section here, buttons with rising and lowering platforms. The platforms can raise and crush you, which is extremely dangerous, you, you don't want that to happen. And this is just a really lovely room here as well. The uh, the use of vores, which is common in this map, is a sort of a pressure tool. And then the chaos of having all the ogres, and it's just an interesting layout to move around in as well. You've got to think about where you're going to go, otherwise you might clip into something and stop, and stop dead and then take damage. So you can see here that if you jump too uh, late there, you'll get pushed down into the lava by the platform that lowers. And this one here, if you jump too late as well, you'll get crushed on the way around to the Floyd here. So you've got to you've got to think on the fly. Playing this blind was an intimidating map. It's there's a lot of places you can take a lot of damage. I make it look a lot easier here because I know what I'm doing, and I've done this you know a couple of times before to learn how to do it efficiently. Nice back spawn here, uh, used sparingly, they're always good, because obviously the first thing that most Quake players do when they hear a Fiend is press the back button. So you put a Fiend behind as well, or something behind, to make that not work out in their favour. All the secrets, as far as I can tell, are tied to these buttons, basically, so uh, they're not hard to find. They're really not hard to find, and they're big rewards. 168 there, the, the Mega makes this next fight coming up, the first arena fight much, much easier to deal with. Uh, this is a, a genuinely difficult fight if you don't know what you're doing. But I'll, I've figured it out and I'll explain it to you. So it's nice, you've got the sort of blue fog, it's got that forbidding feeling. 
suspiciously the lightning gun isn't trapped, so it makes you think what's going on, and your only choice is to go up in this lift, which traps you. Doing so here, you can see, oh, it's raising the, the key, it raises that anticipation, anticipation, I'm going to be doing something for the gold key, and then it drops the floor out from underneath you, literally, and the fight begins. So, monster spawning seems to be tied to the deaths of these mutants here, which are the fiend-like guys. And the more of them you kill, the more stuff spawns in, so one spawns in a lieutenant, then you have the ones that put the, uh, the vores in the pillars, and then you've got the, uh, the shambler behind. The trick is to kill the lieutenant immediately, because they can sort of predict where you're going to go and track with you as you're moving, which is dangerous. And then it's to kill another mutant as fast as possible to get the uh, the shambler to appear, because the chances are you're not going to be able to deal with the shambler if there's loads of projectiles on you and whatever else and not take damage. So just tank him, basically, face tank him. And it works out quite nicely. Uh, the power's gone out, so we can't go back up to this, the gold key door, which is above. We've got to take this detour. Another great fight here. Uh, the dogs trigger the door to open with the vor. So if you don't know that's going to happen, you can't pre-grenade like I did there, and you've got a vor just spamming projectiles at you. And this kind of dangerous to move around arena here with the, uh, the staircases and all the ogres who are marksman ogres, so they're tracking where you're going to go. It means you'll probably get quite a tail of vor projectiles that are legitimately hard to get rid of. And then when you move on, there's just more shooting the buttons, raising the platforms, climbing across, that sort of thing. Another nice room here, which is unfortunate you can back out of so easily, because you have the, the pressure from all sides, basically. A lot of ogre good times. And you can see the... I really love the light bolt on the on the slime here. It looks so good. I uh, just want to point that out again. It's beautiful. So this is a bit obtuse. The shoot buttons you've got to shoot here in the distance to raise these platforms to move along. I missed them a lot in this, which wastes a lot of time in a sort of a speedrunny capacity. Uh, makes me wish there was something a little bit more accurate than create shotgun, or my aim was slightly better. And it brings you along to here, where above you can see two grunts guarding the battery, which we're going to need to get out. Final secret here. There are some ammo boxes and unmarked secret on uh, unmarked secret on the ductwork, which I don't go for. But that's okay, because all I really want is that. Restoring the power. Red comes there to lead you back, in case you're like me and you weren't paying attention when you first played this, and you're like, oh, what am I doing? Oh, the power. Went oh, right. It just lets you know. Yeah, go over here. Go, over, go in this direction. To the big gold door here. This is a really, really clever piece of design here as well. Um, so you want to jump across here. Those platforms don't come back up. It puts you in an immediate room with that, this vor. And the in initial thing whenever you see a, an elevated vor is you want to get directly underneath it. If you do that, you're going to run straight into the lava, which will then respawn you directly in front of them again. So it's a really bad, bad idea, basically. And you're not going to be able to run either. So it's, it's, it's good. And here's the final arena. Basically, this is progressively raising and lowering floors with the respawning resources on the corners. That's all there is to it. And then it spawn things in progressively, front, sides, front, back, front, you know, etc. So you've got the rocket launcher. As long as you take your time, this is the secret here, take your time with this and your footing is the most important thing because that's the thing that's going to do the most damage to you. You're going to be fine, basically. It is tricky though, don't get me wrong, this is... It demands a certain situational awareness and ability to dodge and move and aim and, and so on. We can see here it's relatively straightforward when you know. Except for the part here where the lieutenants come out, and that's kind of scary, to be honest with you. <laughs> and the suicide drones up ahead. You can as well kill yourself if you let the platform lure you into the lava and you're shooting the LG. You can discharge in there. I keep calling it lava, it's slime, whatever it is. Uh, so watch out for that. But there you go. That is pipework powered pillars. I really didn't say much of value there when I was trying to talk through it because I played too quickly. Alas, give that one a go. It's by SED, a very talented mapper. I'm really looking forward to anything else they put out there. And there's a bunch of other really fantastic maps in Sewer Jam 2 as well. Uh, uses Alkaline 1.2. 
or pre-release of it. So there's a lot of features there which will take you by surprise. And let me tell you, there's some fantastic use of them. Give it a go. Thanks very much. Goodbye.